everyone, it's Colleen here. I just want to share this little card with you. I found one on Pinterest. For the life of me, I can't remember who made it, but I will find out the lady's name and let you know. Um, I just thought it was just lovely. She'd used three pieces of different coloured paper just to make some candles, and I'm, I love candles at Christmas time, so I thought I'd make up this little card to share with you today. I made it in one of my classes, and it went down really well. So um, I've changed it a little bit just for the video. To make it a bit easier so I'll show you this was the original and I've cut these pieces here out of the Cricut and the candles are a bit wider I've made them a little bit narrower which I think was better but anyway let's see how we go uh, what we need today is to have a, a white card which is uh, four and a half four and a quarter by five and a half our red measures four inches by uh, five and a quarter our white measures uh, five inches by three and three quarters and then our little candle pieces they measure one inch by three one inch by two and a quarter and one inch by uh, three and one oh my god one and three quarter inches high we'll also be using um, I've chosen this stamp set because I wanted the leaf and that's the thin cut and that's what has made the candle pieces so that's that's the top so that's going to be the candle pieces on the card so how cool is that so it's, I rather like that glittery look so we're doing that in gold glitter I'm also I've also chosen another stamp set this one here it's a new one I've not used it before but I think it's lovely uh, Prince of Peace and we're using this one here and then we're just going to cut out around that one there so that we can colour it in and place it on, onto the bottom of our card onto the bottom of the candles and we're using our uh, gold glitter gems today which I really love plus our shin hand markers that we're using uh, what is that clay carmine and that one I know is sap green even though you can't see it because it's worn off because I use it so much so let's get started. Now the first thing we need to do is to stamp our Merry Christmas. Oh, and I forgot that one comes from, do you know, I can't remember. I will find it and put it up for you. So we'll uh, run at this through the big shot first. And we're going to be using our Chevron folder. Gosh, I'm losing the plot today. <coughs> so I'll just bring up the big shot. What mats out. But before we do that, we'll stamp the. I should have stamped the Merry Christmas on it first. With the other one, I stamped it on after. And as you can see, it's just missed here. So you really need to stamp your Merry Christmas first and then emboss. So that's what we'll do. I'll turn the mat over and I'm using cranberry ink now this stamp was a full length stamp so it was Merry Christmas but I cut it in half because I wanted it so that I can have it one on top of the other but you could also if you wanted to have it long you just stick it back together so that's the easiest way to, to work it just stick that up to the top Ta -da! We'll close this up. So that's all we need of the cranberry. Put our mat back over. And bring up the big shot again. And then we're going to run we'll run this through. So you just line it up. Pop it in. Make your sandwich. And roll it through. So there's our front panel done. See how that works out much easier. Now while I've got it up here I shall cut out I'll cut out the the last little leaf. Uh, yeah it is a leaf but it does make a great little candle piece I think. So you just need to cut three of those, but I've already done two to save a bit of time. So 
there we go and that's just from our gold glitter and we finish with our finish with the big shot <coughs> do excuse me I've been sick again and I'm very fed up with it so if I start coughing I seriously apologize so what we're going to do now is we're going to take our red our white front and attach it to our piece of red so it has a 1 8 of an inch border all the way around we'll attach this to the front of the card right so I'll put that onto there now we'll put our candles on Now I don't put the uh, flame on yet, I work out where I might like the candles to go and I usually put them about, well I don't know how far it is, let me have a look, if I put it there, probably about three quarters of an inch from the bottom, yep that'll do, it's as good as it's going to get, I'll look at that. Good guesstimation, eh? I didn't even do that. Right, put our second one on. Now you can go across the bottom, but just on either side at the top here, because you want somewhere so you can slip the flame in. Up that one up. Put that one just onto the top of there, so it's in the middle between the two of them. And then with our flames, so now I've got room to just slip them down inside. I mean, that's how easy that is. Isn't that a cool little card? So I say thank you to the lady who did it, if I could remember her name. It was a while ago when I found it, so there we are. So that's that done. Get that out of the way for the minute. Now we're going to take a piece of white. And using, as you can see, my block. I chose the biggest block, didn't I? Only because the other one's got something on it. And I didn't want to take it off. So we'll just ink up our, our block in archival ink because we're going to be colouring it in. And then we're just going to stamp that down. Ta da! Oh, that's a nice one. It's the best one yet. And I'll clean that off after. Now, to cut this one out, it really does need to dry a little bit. But I just cut out around here. Oh, get rid of that bit. And then I just carefully cut out around it. But you really don't need to see me do all of that. And I left just a tiny little border of white that you can cut in closer if you wish or further out, it's up to you. So that's all I did there. And by the miracle of television, ta-da! Already done, because you didn't need to watch me do that. So I'll put that one aside and cut that out later. Now we're just going to colour it in. <clears throat> I've chosen the clay to colour in the pine cone. And I was thinking that you could probably start cut this out again and cut the flower out and raise the flower and have a second flower on the top which would look really cool if you wanted to we will do I thought the flower would be nice in the carmine Talks amongst yourselves while I'm doing this. I have to warn you, I'm not the best person at colouring in, or I'd be terrible actually. But like I said, I really love candle cards, so when I get one for Christmas, I sort of like I'm a bit chuffed. But you don't see many candle cards out now. And my mother in law gave me one last year, and she's passed away now, so it's a bit sad. But she gave me my last one and I just 
yeah I'll bring that out every year so I can look at it so this is just you can see I'm not the best just roughly add some color to these don't make a big deal of trying to color in everything perfectly it just adds that bit of tone of color to it there we are done now we will use some 3D foam. Ooh, I haven't got much left to get out a new one. I finally did the right thing. I've got them all in one place, so I'm never hunting for them anymore. Oh, amazing stories. So now we'll just add some 3D foam dots to the back. Might seem a bit excessive on this little thing, but I want it to be able to sit nicely onto the front of the card and then I'll just place that so that it hides the bottom of the candles and gold gem That in the middle of there. I was thinking I might put some more on, but I don't know where. I haven't quite made up my mind. Hmm. I'll leave it for the minute till I can think about it a bit more. Sometimes less is more. So there we have it. There's our little card. I hope you enjoyed this little um, video. So till next time, keep on creating and bye for now. <laughs>